Next, our next feature speaker is Eddie McCain. He's been here many times, but this is his first time to be on the marquee and to be the feature speaker. So let's give him a big round of applause. Start the Ponzi scheme could come up as a question. It's, a, uh, <laughs> it's his first time wearing a suit, dude. Isn't it? Well, where are you been, man? <laughs> it used to be camouflage. Really. I've been dressing GQ like this for what two months? Yeah, he's on Facebook that way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now, my name is Eddie McCain. For the few in here that might not know who I am, and uh, I was born in West Columbia, graduated from Airport High School back in 1977. Uh, left Columbia around 83, got married, went to college, went into the Army, retired in <clears> April <throat> of 2009, and uh, moved back home. Um, I married, been married for 28 years, almost 28 years. My wife is a school teacher. Uh, she followed me all across the United States teaching school. Currently teaches at Gilbert Primary. I have two grown sons. My oldest son just graduated from Morris Hill College in North Carolina. And uh, my baby boy is a junior at, at Liberty University. Uh, the reason why I want to be involved in the political arena, because I get asked this all the time, why in the world would you want to get in, involved in politics? <clears throat> it's because government is not doing what it's supposed to do. And that is ensure that your constitutional rights are not violated. That's the purpose for, for government. We have a uh, we have a bill that was at the county level. I think it was ordinance 12-02. I think enough people were against it that the county backed down. But now I'm reading, thanks to Talbert and a few other people posting on Facebook and all, that now this is an actual bill in the Senate. It's uh, Senate Bill 235, where if it passes next week, then the Senate will give all counties in South Carolina the authorization to tell you how tall your grass can get, or how tall it cannot get, how clean your swimming pools have to be, and we'll also let you know that you can't have a portable storage building in your yard, that that building will have to be on a foundation or on a slab. Well, what happened with property rights? You know, the Declaration of Independence, you know, re reveals to us the rights that are naturally given to us by God. The right to your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And we know that pursuit of happiness means property rights. Back prior to the Revolutionary War, it was very uncommon for an individual like us to own property. You couldn't own property. All property was owned by the government, was owned by the king. This was a, a very um, radical concept that you as an individual could own your home. Because what that told the king was the poorest dirt farmer living in a chicken coop could stand there and look at the king and say, you cannot come into my house. This is my house. That's where the concept uh, a man's own castle come into being. Because you know, prior to this time, the only person living in the castle was the king. And they were the ones that owned the property. Now, we, Declaration of Independence, we won the Revolutionary War, supposedly. Now we have property rights. You have the right to own your own property. We have the, 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 the Bill of Rights. We have the Fourth Amendment. We're used to securing your person and securing your properties. We're supposed to be able to control who comes into our land and how we act on our land. Unless you go to the airport. Unless you go to the airport. Unless you deal with TSA. Things are, are, are radically changing. Most people don't even realize the changes are taking place because it's kind of like it's kind of like a person going around looking for the devil as a guy in a long red underwear and a pitchfork. You know, it's, nothing is ever that startling. It's not like you're walking down the street and oh my God, there's the devil. He's a long red underwear and a pitchfork and he's breathing fire and he's, he's smelling like smoke. Bad things that come upon us are never that obvious. Things always come gradually. And that's how government operates. Government may pass a bill today, and then three or four years from now, we'll start seeing the enacting of that bill when people aren't even looking for it. We're busy over here looking at something else, and then that bill comes into play now. So I want to be involved because I'm a firm believer in very, very, very small government 
free enterprise local decision making. And I see us as, as a, big, a big huge lake with a big dam and there's all kinds of little holes in that dam where water's leaking out. And I know as a representative for uh, House C39, which is Western Lexington County, Gilbert, Batesburg, Leesville, two-thirds of Sluda County, that I'll be at least one person who'll be sticking their thumb in a hole and holding that water out. When I was, um, let me give you a new illustration here of how I see, of how I see government. Um, when my boys were little, I was stationed at Fort Polk, Louisiana. I'm, I'm retired Army. Um, I lived on a street called Lena Beth Drive. It was a long street off a very busy highway, ended in a cul-de-sac. It was actually a very ideal street to raise small boys on because the only traffic that came down to my end of the street was the few people that actually lived there. So I could tell my little boys at that time they were, I think, eight, age six and age eight, that they could ride their bicycle in the cul-de-sac and they could go like two houses up, but that was it. Once they passed those two houses, got that two house limit, there was still like four more houses before they hit the highway. Now, was I concerned about them passing two houses or was I concerned about them getting in the highway? I was concerned about them getting in the highway, but I didn't say, all right, boys, little six-year-old Michael Chase, little eight-year-old Trey, you can ride your little bicycle all the way up to the stop sign, but you can't pass the stop sign because you'll be in the highway. I didn't do that. I said, you can go up two houses up to Mr. Taylor's driveway. And I'd be out in the yard, they'd be out there playing, and I'd keep my eye on them. And every once in a while, particularly my oldest son, Trey, he'd be on his little bicycle, little leg just to ride. He'd get right up that driveway, he'd be looking around, see if he sees me. <laughs> You know, and then he'll, he don't see me because I'm not letting him see me. I'm back behind the garage watching it. He'll pedal on across. I'll hop out and I'll yell, Trey, get out here! To get back in here, boy, I swat him on the butt, say, put your bike in the garage and you go in the house. You sit in there for an hour. Well, an hour to eight year old is like two weeks. You know, I wouldn't let him go past. The point was, I didn't really mind him going past that second driveway. It's just, I didn't want him, I didn't want him get him close to the highway, to the main highway. Well, that's how we have to look at government. You know, we can't allow government to even come close, even come close even to even thinking about violating any of your rights. Because they're your rights. They're God-given rights. The Constitution is a contract between you and the government. And the government is to uphold that contract. How do they uphold the contract? They uphold that contract by ensuring that nobody else violates your rights. But what is happening is they're the ones that are violating your rights. And so we need people that's going to be able to stand up. You know, and I know I'm, when I'm speaking, I'm rough as a corn cop. Um, I spent 20 years in the Army, so I'm used to speaking loud and yelling at soldiers and that kind of thing. But I'm not afraid to stand up for what I believe. I, you know, I have no heartburn about people not liking me. I mean, I won't be liked, don't get me wrong, but I don't have a problem doing what's right, regardless of what somebody else thinks. Not to say that I don't bend on certain issues. We can compromise on the color of the wall we're going to paint. We can compromise on where we're going to have to eat. I may want steak, you may want seafood. I say, fine, I'll eat scallops and fish, that's no problem. We don't compromise on individual rights. Never, never, for any reason, under any circumstances, do we ever compromise on individual rights. When we do that, the party's over. The party's over. Yeah. You know, this is something that really amazes me. Right? I, I've been spending, when I decided to run for this office, if I was to tell you I knew zero people in Saluda County, that would be too many. I didn't know anybody in Saluda County. Nobody. There's people in Saluda County? There's people in Saluda County. And there's a big area out there. It's the Hollywood community. So I spent a lot of time out there in the Hollywood community. And people come up to me. They, they don't even ask me what I believe. The only thing they're concerned about is my Republican. They run up and say, I'm shaking hands, passing out cars, talking to people. Are you a Republican? 
I, I'm Republican. All right, man, I'm, I'm with you. You got my vote. And they walk right off. You know, and it's like, in today's time, you know, Republicans, Democrats, I am running as a Republican, but Republicans and Democrats are basically <coughs> opposite wings flying on the same bird. Um, most people, they aren't really, cons they aren't really cons I don't know whether they just don't know enough about individual rights and, and about issues. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, we, we definitely need more groups like this here where people could come get you. I'll be honest with you, three years ago when I retired from the Army, I was an entirely different person than I am right now. I, I come out of the Army, you know, I was, you know, hard charging government, USA, you know, mama ma, let God sort them out. And I didn't understand individual rights. I didn't understand any of that stuff. I, I spent 20 years in the Army. And it took coming to organizations like this and listening to people and thinking, man, that guy sounds crazy. <laughs> but instead of just leaving it that, I'd go home and do my own homework. I'd look stuff up, get on the computer, try to figure out what is right and what is wrong. The bottom line, the bottom line is, is that God gives everybody the individual rights. That's where it comes from, and government doesn't have the right to take it. And anytime you, you know, you say, well, what about for security reasons? Well, when you're willing to, to give up your freedom for security, you're gonna wind up with neither one because the government's gonna take it all from you. Yeah. This might be off the wall, but Rich and, and Andy you know, on, on these, <laughs> these issues separately. But one of the things you see here, uh, uh, America, yeah, you're seeing involvement from the citizens about individual about individual freedom, and you're hearing people talk about it. And, yeah, we're, we're our generation is now the vanguard protector of the Constitution and the, our freedom. If we don't get involved, and stay involved, then we've got problems. So uh, you know, these gentlemen are running, so we're trying to change the process and maintain the free time from working within the, within the process. So, Eddie, thank you for coming. Uh, I enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Now, now, now there's a point here where I call, I call our brother here with the Monica up here to uh, play some check writing music, and y'all can donate to my campaign. All right, before you donate.